Marginal 3 is a PDF annotation tool that is highly focused on mind mapping and note taking. It covers many areas and has many functions. Let me show you the use cases for Margin Note 3. The first part, I am going to show you how to use Margin Note 3 to effectively study for courses related to anatomy and physiology. The second part is going to be covered by Sarah. She will be talking to you more about how to use Margin Note 3 for reading books and extracting preliminary information. So let's get started with what Margin Note 3 is about. First of all, you can easily add in many PDFs and other documents to annotate on them. That's just a basic function and that's not what Margin Note is about. Instead, Margin Note allows us to easily pull information out of the PDF as an excerpt. Now this is where Margin Note 3 really shines. You can then link all the different excerpts into a large mind map. This enables us to quickly view and link all of the information that we gather from multiple PDFs into one area. I would recommend you start using Margin Note 3 by creating a fully structured hierarchical system to pull out all the information. This allows us to quickly move back and forth between the PDFs, see the outline of the documents, and how they are linked together. Margin Note 3 is probably the first app that has already implemented bidirectional linking way before Rome even started. This means we are able to link different parts of the mind map together and break the hierarchical structure that we have first built. This enables us to have the interconnected thought process that Rome Research and many other new note-taking apps has been pushing for, which is truly a great way to do note-taking. Margin Note 3 also has an incredible outline feature which enables us to see the full hierarchy which we have built. This allows us to build our own table of content and quickly move between them back and forth. We can then link it out further when we decide that certain aspects are more important by building up a new and separate mind map. As you can see, you can also write on the mind map and you can also use gestures to link different parts of the mind map together, which just makes things a lot faster. At the end of the day, I still find doing a hand-drawn mind map the best way to grasp a topic. Because even after we extract all the information, we still need to draft and formulate how everything comes together. You might be wondering, why bother with hand-drawn mind maps since we already have one on Margin Note? Well, the mind mapping software on Margin Note continuously updates as we add more and more content. This means the items on the mind map constantly moves around and changes. This is both a strength, but also a flaw. You see, by having a mind map that consistently updates, we negate the use of spatial memory. In contrast, when you are drawing a mind map, what you draw stays there. Instead, margin note should be used to consolidate everything at the end of a study session in a tidy and organized fashion. We can do all of this on margin note as well. We can open up a new child mind map and start drawing out our mind map first. After we're done, we can open it in a float view on top of our main mind map to take reference. Now, we can start designing our mind map the way we want and start linking up different portions of the notes together. This is the power of margin notes. Since we have extracted different parts of the document, we can easily relink everything out into a study mind map and reorganize all the key pointers into something that will help us ace that exam. There is another feature of margin note 3 that I personally don't use, but some of you may like it, which is the review function and the card deck. Titles of the notes become a question and the comments from the note become the answer. You can then look at all of these in a card deck that you can use for revision. This can be very useful if you're on the go and only have your phone with you. Now, here's a quick summary on how I use Margin Note 3 to study. First, I'll extract all the information that I can get from the headers from my document, and then map it out in a hierarchical order. That way, when I click or tap on the mind map, I can immediately see which section I want. Next, I pull up a new child mind map, which I use to hand draw and draft 
the mind map. This helps me consolidate all the information that I just pulled. Next, I go back to the main mind map, open up the child mind map, and then I start connecting things together. Once I have a broader understanding of the subject, I create a new node and start a new mind map. Seeing how this is anatomy and physiology, I map out all of the conditions into the relevant anatomy, etiology, diagnosis, prevention, presentation, signs and symptoms, complications, treatment, management, and other facts. I link up the notes to the original mind map that I have built or I pull information directly from the document. This enables me to quickly save time as I do not have to spend hours typing out notes, but instead rely on consistently linking and reorganizing the mind map to get a good understanding and overview of the subject. Now, if you are a Rome research user or a Obsidian user, just like me, don't worry. You are able to export all of the information into Markdown. Markdown is not officially supported on Margin Note 3, but we are able to export it into a mind map format. We can then send this to MindNode, a separate app, which is free, and then re-export it into a Markdown file. This means that at the end of the day, you are able to import all of this into your personal knowledge management system, which for me is either on RemNote, Obsidian, or Rome Research. These applications are truly one of the best out there. Now that you understand how I use Margin Note to study, I'm going to hand over the time to Sarah, who is going to show you how she uses Margin Note for reading books. I use Margin Note when I'm reading multiple books on a specific topic, such as sleep. I have insomnia pretty often and I end up reading books and multiple research papers on sleep. Trying to combine all the information into something more cohesive and actionable is hard. And in most cases, I will write out everything I learn on Rome Research, my go-to platform for all the things that I read. However, it does take up many hours to manage the digital garden and I may not even want to keep all the information that I read. I'm looking for a quick, fast and easy way to come to a conclusion. This is where Margin Note comes in. I pick out key data and information from different books, build up different categories for them, such as research results, anecdotes, key information, new ideas, actionable items, just to name a few. And when I'm done pulling out all the information I want, I start linking them up. At the end of my session, I can see how the different books have similar results or have different findings and start to draw my own conclusions from there. And if the research proves to be worth it, I will then key it into raw research to be part of my digital garden. Alright, we hope you have learned a lot from today's video and we hope to see you again soon. If you are a Margin Note user too, let us know in the comments how you use it in your work or studies. And please remember to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon if you want to get notified whenever we post a new video.